This video is about the WPF menus. Menus are very important and essential part of a UI based uh, or window based application. So we will be developing something like this that if we have uh, the file menu, we have an icon and we have a shortcut keys and new and exit and we will see that how we can uh, use the application level commands let's say uh, control N and control O and also we have some commands over here although we have not implemented this but you can follow the tutorial and you can implement on your own uh, we also created a small application uh, which is uh, very close to notepad in which we have uh, wrap text uh, by default and uh, we have a uh, checkable and we also can use the shortcut key to unwrap and wrap so if I press ctrl w so it's uh, not wrapping the text and you see that uh, it's uh, not happening over there so we can also do this uh, wrap and unwrap and we'll see that how we can add the shortcut keys and we can use the commands which is a bit complicated in WPF uh, when we are working with the menus and the shortcut keys with our custom menu so let's see how we do this let's add a new window for menus so I will add a new window and let's name it WF menus I will need this name for uh, adding in XAML file over here and uh, so this is my window so let's, let's make it a bit smaller okay to add menu I can go into toolbar toolbox and then I will search for menu and I will add it over here so this is our actually menu you see over here and I can actually adjust it according to this so uh, the perfect height or the normal height of a menu is like 20 and even for the sub menus and I can right click on it and I can add a menu item or even I can write XAML for this so the height could be 20 and make it file and I can further add a menu item inside this so this menu item uh, can be let's say for example uh, new and again height could be 20 and uh, I can add another that is let's say open and the width of this menu can be according to the text so that uh, I can have it like this so I can actually repeat this and I can add further items so let's say for example make it add it and inside edit we have a cut copy and another one is let's say paste so that's how actually you can add uh, menus uh, you can actually directly write XAML as well and uh, that's how you do that and uh, let's say for example if I want to add a separator I can add a separator and uh, that should be inside inside this uh, main file menu so add a separator and again the height for a separator could be one uh, one pixel is enough and I can actually repeat a menu item let's say for example exit like this so let's run this and see how it looks like it's file new open exit and these are our menu item 
and uh, we can also add events for this let's say for example uh, in this I can have uh, click event and I can create a new event so before that I can actually name it like uh, let's name it as uh, menu item exit so that we should have a proper naming convention should be used for the click event item event handler so we can go into the event handler and uh, write application dot current and shutdown it has been changed in uh, modern dotnet framework version uh, before it was application dot exit that's it but now it's application dot current dot shutdown so uh, so if I go and click exit and it actually closes that in that way and uh, about adding uh, uh, shortcut keys it's a very common thing in uh, different editors let's say for example you see a shortcut keys over here uh, if we want to add some shortcut keys uh, there is a bit different way as compared to win forms in uh, WPF so to do that uh, I can use uh, command so new is actually uh, new is actually a command that would be used at application level and that is a common uh, commonly available uh, command which uh, I can use and uh, you see a shortcut key has been added uh, by default uh, for exit uh, it's not a command exit command is not available it's not a general command that we can use there are few commands that we can use such as uh, such as open as well and you see uh, automatic and uh, a shortcut key combination has been added over here and for exit uh, we don't have a command so if I want to show a command I can display uh, through input gesture text which is CTRL for example X so but uh, this will not work we will see that how we configure this but for the commands which are actually available for new and we also have commands available for uh, uh, cut and also for uh, copy and also we have a command available for paste so like this and uh, we can increase the width to let's say for the 150 so that we can see the complete text and also for these one make it 150 width like this and also for this one so all the menu items should have equal uh, width uh, because when we uh, create a child menu over here for example if I add a menu item over here you see an arrow over here otherwise we will not be see this arrow over here so let's say for example this is the height 20 and uh, menu open ha has uh, an option like this so we can also nest different menu items like this and uh, all right so I was talking about the commands available for new and for open so let's run this and I will show you the problem the problem is for the commands we see these shortcut keys but these shortcut keys will not work and these uh, menu items are disabled this one is not disabled because these commands has no attachment with backend event handler we cannot use directly click event for this because uh, it uses binding so to do bind this I have to write window dot command bindings and I will be adding command binding and command binding I need to specify that uh, which command should I bind with this uh, event so let's say for example for new and there are few things that uh, can execute 
event and we also need execute event so executed event so these are the events that will be used uh, by this new command and you can see that these events are added over here so I can actually rename them so command binding uh, can execute so I can say that this is for the new and this is for the new and I can actually copy this and just replace the default value or the default event which was added so just replace that now what you need to do is for the can execute I need to specify yes it can execute so I can execute this command and this is our business logic where I will write my all the functionality what I want to do with when this command should be executed so let's say for example new menu item triggered or clicked like this and uh, let's run this so if I see that now file uh, and new is selectable and open is still not selectable because now this command has a binding over here so if you see that this command has a binding with, with the help of command binding so I can if I click on this so new menu item click message has been shown if I press press control n again this message will appear now I can use this shortcut key over here similarly Similarly, I can do this with the open command. Similar thing. So let's say, for example, this is the open command, and I can say that I need to have. So let's add them by themselves. I can later rename that. So I will call it open just to differentiate and I will just copy this portion and I will just replace this one over here so I can mention over here that e dot can execute is true and let's show again a message box that tells me that open menu item is clicked or triggered so if I run this so if I go file new and now it's uh, selectable if I click on this nothing happens because it is a sub menu and normally when you have a sub menu it does not work like this so I will go and remove this sub menu because normally parent menu does not trigger itself it actually provides you a kind of a navigation so let's say for example if we have uh, this run this run itself does not do anything it it doesn't perform any function but it sub menu does perform some functions so let's open this and see that if I press open or if I press control O it will be triggered so that's how actually we can uh, add shortcut keys uh, with the predefined commands application level commands and we can do that similar things we can do with the cut copy and the paste commands and we can use that and uh, for the other let's say for example for the exit we have a header and we have a exit header and we can display this command but this will not trigger control x will not trigger this event handler to do that we need to implement i command interface in a class and we have to use that so I will demonstrate I will demonstrate it now
all right to implement the control x uh, shortcut key uh, which is uh, custom shortcut key and is it's not a command uh, we need to create a binding and this time we don't have a window dot command binding this time we have a uh, we have input binding and input binding we will be doing key binding and in key binding we will specify the which key combination will bind with the with the with the command so we specify the key so that's about them x is the key and the modifier is a combination with the control and the command is actually this time we have a binding so when we do the binding we need to specify or implement the i command uh, a class we need to create a class which implements i command and we need to bind that with the data context so let's create a let's say class uh, exit key let's name it exit key and uh, i can implement the command interface and i need to implement all the uh, functions of this interface so you see that can execute uh, execute actually exists in this and uh, can execute i will return true in this and this is the execution of the command so let's let's display a message box uh, let's say control x which tells me that this is triggered when control x is pressed <coughs> now i need to create a class as well and that class can be let's say exit command class which returns actually which should have a property of uh, type i command which means that this will return i command and let's say exit command and uh, this property should have a getter and it will return the object of this exit key class so new so it's a bit like confusing and complicated saying in wpf it's not uh, like this so i will call it class or maybe i can call it exit uh, exit command context so this is the command that we will actually bind uh, in the binding section over here and I can just copy and paste and I can actually specify the the data context to new exit command context so this is the thing that I need to attach this uh, class object with the data context and uh, in this case it's returning the i command uh, property and this is the binding so when we bind this with the with the exit command uh, this one and we can only access this once it has this class has a binding with the data context of this this uh, window uh, WPF window alright so <coughs> let's try that so if I now if I exit press exit uh, it will trigger the function which is actually attached with that and if I press control X it should actually triggered the command that we actually asso associated or we just bind did the binding of that so you see that if I press control X it's triggering that uh, command so now the question is that how can I trigger the event handler that is already over there inside this code because this is a separate class this is another class and this is another class and actual thing is happening over here 
so I can actually pass on things so I can actually modify this uh, uh, command and uh, I can do and things like this uh, with this one so in case of uh, uh, just uh, exit uh, function I can just uh, reuse that over here uh, like this so instead of having this one I can also exit my application so if I press control X so it will exit <coughs> so let's have a look at uh, another similar example with the shortcut key in the menu so I will create a menu over here with the format another thing is that if I put an underscore of before any character I will see a shortcut uh, uh, alt key combination let's say for example if I press alt in uh, visual studio you see that this f it has an underscore and e has an underscore which means that I can control that with the alt key so if I press alt e it will open this menu to achieve that in our uh, WPF application we can put underscore uh, before any key or any letter so that it will be the combination of alt e alt f and like this so let's have a format and in format I want to use a header for uh, let's say wrap for the wrapping text and uh, I can make it a bit uh, different just like a notepad where uh, it's it's checkable so is checkable is true and is checked is true so by default initially it will be checked and uh, I want to have its uh, input gesture text to be control ctrl plus w and I can increase the width a bit to let's say 160 now that's better uh, now if I run this so if I press alt key you see that file is already by default selected just like we have this behavior in Visual Studio so if I press alt and uh, alt, alt and E it will open edit if I press alt F and uh, alt f will actually confuse this because we have f alt f combination is assigned over here and f is assigned over here in this case i can actually change that to some other uh, letter let's say for example o so if i press alt f it will open alt it will open file menu and if I open if I press alt o it will uh, open this so when once we have a duplicate we actually change the character just just like if I press alt over here so you see that for the team it's M and for the tools it's T for the test is it's S and uh, like that so so we have a wrap and if I click on it it's uh, checkable and it's toggle so if I click again it will be unchecked so if I click it's checked so let's add a text box and uh, I will anchor this because uh, with the anchoring I can actually control that and by default its text is nothing and I can give it a, a name 
a TXE box and if I run this you see if I resize so boxes over there and even the menus over there so I can actually put an anchor like this and for the box like this and like this okay so and by default text wrapping is wrap which means that when the application will be launched at the first time so it is saying that it's wrap and actually it's wrap so if I let's say paste this so it's wrapping and it's not moving forward so it's by default wrap so let's add an event for this so to do that because this is a custom and this is not the command just like this and uh, for this we need to add binding so I will just copy this one which we used for the uh, X it's saying that it's uh, sorry I will just need to copy this one and I don't need this one because uh, input binding tag cannot be repeated so control W will actually bind with the command let's say call it wrap command and in my class over here uh, we have exit key and we can actually create another key for I can I can also move them in a separate file so instead of exit key we have a wrap key and uh, in the case of wrap key let's say for example show that wrap shortcut key pressed and over here uh, it's uh, returning an exit command so I can use another command which is is actually a wrap command so wrap command and that would be returning an object of wrap key so wrap key and I can say that this is a wrap command that I'm going to use over here so if I run this and if I press control W it's saying the wrap shortcut key pressed okay so and if I press this one nothing is happening but the shortcut key is actually has a binding and uh, for this uh, I can actually what I want is I want to change the wrapping of this uh, text box so the problem over here is that I cannot access that text box inside this class because uh, I'm actually modifying over here I want to modify the property over here and it's not accessible so let's see how we do this so in order to access the text box uh, we have uh, two approaches uh, that I have in mind my mind right now one is that I access the all window uh, windows objects and we iterate through and then we find out the which window is is that running and then I actually access the uh, text box and I do that before uh, doing this one is that one thing is that how can I reuse the command uh, for the wrap key so that whenever I press the menu item or the shortcut key the same function should be executed to do that it's uh, quite easy uh, we can actually <coughs> do the command binding over here as well so binding and it was a wrap command and if I save and run now this menu item should also work with the click like this so work with the click like this 
so see if I press Control W it's working if I click it's working so now this command is also or the event is also attached uh, with this one so now how do I access this text box so that I can change the text wrapping uh, when I click on this so to do this I can actually one approach is that I can see the all the windows so it's a, it has a collection of uh, window objects so I can actually use for each to iterate through from the application dot current dot windows so each object is of type window so let's call it let's say win and uh, I can check the type if type matches so win dot get type and it should be equal or should be the same type as we have our window because we have a text box over here <coughs> so, so if it matches I then um, convert to typecast this into uh, WPF menus so when like this so now I can confidently typecast and then I can access txt box and I can choose text wrapping to uh, enumerator which is uh, because when user presses it's uh, initially it's wrap so I can choose no wrap and if I run this so let's add some some text so it's wrap so if I press uh, or uncheck the wrap it should be no wrap like this see and if I click again to make it wrap it will not wrap because I have not handled this situation over here so I can actually do that with uh, just uh, uh, a simple check that I can check the wrapping and uh, I can decide that either it's already wrapped or not so I can actually do this so if uh, its wrapping is uh, not wrap then we have to do this otherwise otherwise we do wrap so it will first check if it's not wrap then we perform the no wrap <coughs> so I guess my logic is uh, correct let's see so if I have uh, text it's wrap so if I say no wrap so I cannot see the effect so if if it's not wrap sorry if it's wrap then I need to do no wrap so let's paste this if I no wrap so if I wrap it it should wrap it so like this and I can remove this uh, annoying text box so that's how I I can access the uh, the object from another window and uh, some ways it's not safe it's not good approach we can also do another approach which is that we can pass the object of uh, text box uh, to this class and uh, then we later on next pass to this class and then we access that object or change or modify that object inside this 
uh, execute function of uh, wrap text so let's see how we do this so to pass the object uh, I can uh, modify this class uh, a bit so that I can forward uh, the uh, text box to wrap key so I can uh, create a public property uh, let's say I can make it of type object so that if I want to pass any object to any of the classes over there I can do that so uh, let's let's call it uh, obj for wrap wrap key so get and set so and I need to pass this uh, on wrap key so which means I need to go and modify this class and I add another property over here so let's say for example object a UI element I'm expecting a UI element and that can be anything so I'm just generalizing it and uh, when I uh, create an object over here I have an option to pass the UI element that I have received over here uh, object that I need to forward and when I create this object uh, I can actually do that so the semicolon so when I create this object over here when I'm uh, performing the uh, data context association so I can say that this dot txt box should be associated with this so this uh, text box would be forwarded over here and then this would be forwarded over here in UI element and it would be received over here which means that instead of this I can actually do that so if I comment this one and I see that what do I receive over here so message box dot show and let's see what do I get in a message box I can also see that in a console but let's see what we get over here so if I press Control W, I'm getting a text box. If I go and click this, I'm getting a text box, which means that I can, because in this case we have an object, I can also check the type. So UI element dot get type should be type of text box type of text box and now I can confidently convert that UI element into a text box text box UI element and now I can do that directly uh, same thing so text wrapping if it's uh, wrap then we do no wrap with the single equal operator this else so in this way I am just passing so let's see how it works So this is wrap 
if I say no wrap it's no wrap and if I say wrap it's wrap like this so what we have done over here how did we achieve that we are passing the object to our uh, although it's exit command context it's not correct uh, I can actually uh, rename that so uh, it should be just commands context let's say so apply we don't have comments yet so, so it rename to commands context so we are passing the object over here to commands context and then we are passing this object over here for the wrap key and UI element and in this case I have created object because later on maybe we want to modify and want to do something else with this uh, uh, wrap command so then we need to change uh, this from the text box I could have actually directly used text box over here as well so it's up to you but uh, I'm using just the object and in this case I am actually checking the type that either it's a text box or not then I need to convert and then do the wrapping like this so in this way in the previous way uh, we were just using the application and the window and then we are we were retrieving like this so in this case we are actually passing the reference of the text box and uh, I guess that's the better way so the last thing I think uh, that menu should have is the icon just like in any application we have some icons on the left so to add the icon we can first add the icon in our uh, project so let's create an icons folder and I have some icons uh, some of them are PNG and one is ICO file so I just drag them and drop them like this and uh, to add an icon over here we can actually create another child element in this we have a menu item dot icon and inside that we create an image tag and we specify the source so in this case the source can be remote as well but uh, we have some local icons so we have let's say for example uh, exit dot png file so this is our icon and you see over here it's uh, a little bit cutting from there from the top so I can actually go and drag it down a little bit similarly we can add for the uh, new we have a new as well so So these are our icons in our application so you see that exit icon is a bit blur because uh, I guess the size of this uh, PNG uh, I can see that the details so 512 is too big uh, for a PNG and for an icon so you also need to see the size so that it looks good over there so that's uh, all about the menus